For those who are just beginning to research their Norwegian ancestry, one of the things that often causes some confusion is the different types of last names and the different last name customs that our Norwegian ancestors used prior to leaving Norway in the 1800s and early 1900s. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time today explaining the difference between a patronymic name and a farm name, which were the two most commonly chosen last names by our Norwegian immigrant ancestors. The obligatory um, slide here explaining that uh, these are my ideas and not the responsibility of Roots Tech or Family Search. Just a little bit about the Norwegian American Genealogical Center and NACEF Library. We are the most comprehensive resource for Norwegian and Norwegian American genealogy that is dedicated exclusively to that ethnic group here in North America. We have nearly 2,000 big debukker in our collection and over 5,000 Norwegian and Norwegian American family histories. We also teach classes on genealogy and have a research and translation services. If you are in need of any of that, we are available to help you with those things. And so a little bit about Norwegian names prior to 1923. Norwegian names generally had three parts. The first part was a first name, and this was a permanent name given to them at baptism. So here we have a little family with a father, a mother, and a couple of children. And everybody has a first name that was given to them at the time of their baptism and remains with them for the rest of their lives. The second part of their name is a patronymic name. This name was also permanent and given to them at baptism. And what a patronymic name is, is adding son or daughter to the father's first name. So in our family here, Mikkel's father's name was Lars. So his name is Mikkel Larsen. His wife, Sigri, her father's name was Ulla. So her middle name is Olsdotter. And then their children, have the last have the patronymic name Mikkel's daughter and Mikkel's son because their father's first name was Mikkel. And again, these names were permanent. So it didn't matter if somebody got married, they did not change that patronymic name because their father's first name did not change. They were still Ol's daughter, Mikkel's daughter, Mikkel's son, Larson, no matter what happened throughout the course of their lives. That name never changed. So let's say we have another family living next door we who the father may have the same first name. We have Mikkel Larson in one house household and then Mikkel Arneson in the other ho household. And because they have the same first name, their children have the same patronymic. So their daughters have the patronymic name Mikkel's daughter. Their sons have the patronymic name Mikkel's son. Having the same patronymic name does not necessarily mean these people are related. They may indeed be related in some way, but they may not. All that having the same patronymic name means is that your father had the same first name. So we have Anna Mikkel's daughter in one house and Solve Mikkel's daughter in another house, only because they have their fathers had the same first name. That's the only reason that they have the same patronymic name, simply because their fathers had the same first name and no other reason. It does not mean that they are related in any way, although they could be. It, that um, patronymic name does not indicate any type of kinship. So they have the first name, which is permanent, and that patronymic name, which was also permanent, and then a third name. And that was more of an address, actually. The farm name was something that could change throughout an individual's lifetime. Anytime they moved to a different farm, they were entitled to use that farm name as part of their name. So it changed every time they moved. If they lived on a dozen different farms in their lifetime, they were entitled to use a dozen different farm names as their final name. So here's our family again, Mikkel and Sigri and Anna and Lars, and they're all using the last name Vik because that's the farm that they were living on. They don't all have the same last name because they're related 
they have the same last name because they live together. So if Lars were to move to another farm, he would be entitled to use a different last name. He would no longer use Veek. And Sigri doesn't have the same farm name as her husband because she's married to him. She has the same farm name because she lives with him. So this name was not permanent. It had nothing to do with marital status. It had nothing to do with being the child of another person. It was simply describing where they lived. So if they were to say uh, another family member were to move in with them, that other family member would be able to use the last name Veek because they're all living on the same farm. So again, we have our family here living on the Veek farm. I just added our other family that we were looking at earlier. And if they're living on the same farm, but in another house, they're entitled to use that name Veek. It doesn't, again, does not mean that they are related. They may be related, but having the same farm name simply means that they're living on the same farm. And farms in Norway generally did have more than one house on them. And so you may have several families living on the same farm. Oftentimes they were related, but they weren't necessarily related. So simply having the same farm name didn't necessarily mean that these people were related. So here is an example. Um, I just grabbed a screenshot of some of my ancestors on Ancestry.com. The primary person here, Jens Thorsted, is my great-great-grandfather. And you can see how everybody in his pedigree here has a first name, and then they have that patronymic second name, and a farm name as the third name. And that farm name isn't necessarily passed from father to child the way that last names are typically passed here in the United States today. And it, also you might notice that sometimes a husband and wife had the same last name. There was no social stigma against having the same last name before you got married because it didn't mean that you were related. It just simply meant that you had been living on the same farm. And sometimes that farm name would be passed from mother to child if the family happened to be living on a farm that had been in the mother's family. So those names didn't travel with our ancestors the way that they typically do with us today from father to child and a mother change or a wife changing her name upon marriage. That wasn't the case with our ancestors. That farm name was simply an address explaining where they were living at any point in time. And that patronymic name did not change. If a woman was to get married, she did not change her patronymic to that of her husband because she didn't all of a sudden become the daughter or son of his father. That didn't make sense to them. They maintained that patronymic name throughout the course of their lifetime. So when our ancestors got to the United States, there was definitely some culture shock because here in the US, last names are typically permanent and husbands and wives have the same last name because they're married, not because they live together. And children have their father's last name because that is how last names are transmitted in this country typically. It has nothing to do with where you live. It is because you are his child, you have his last name. So they had to make some decisions. They had to think about what last name do we want our permanent last name to be? Do we want it to be that patronymic name like Anderson or Nelson? Or do we want it to be a farm name like Berg or Dahl? And those decisions weren't necessarily consistent within families. Sometimes brothers made completely different decisions and wound up having different last names. So this is an example from my ancestry. Um, my ancestors, Kittel Anstensen and Marit Torstadter, um, their last Norwegian residence was the Stowlin farm. And in the 1850s, they moved to Wisconsin. So in 1860 and 1870, uh, when the census was taken, they were using the last name Anstensen. Uh, typically, wives would assume their husband's last name in this country, just following the conventions here. And if they chose a patronymic, they would use that masculine form. So the wife was using Anstensen on the 1860 census and the 1870 census. 
but when the 1880 census rolled around, they were using the last name Stolen, which was kind of an Americanized form of that Norwegian Stolen that they left behind in the 1850s. But we can see on Kittle's headstone when he died in 1881, he was using Unstinson again. So even though they were expected to choose a permanent last name, they didn't necessarily do that. Sometimes they would flip-flop back and forth between a farm name and a patronymic name here in this country. So when you're doing research on a family here in this country, it's important to keep track of the extended family, their other children, brothers and sisters, so you know that you're looking at the right family because the last name isn't necessarily going to be consistent from census to census. Now an interesting thing about Kittle and Marit's children, they didn't um, necessarily make the same choice. So their son Thor here, his last Norwegian residence, like his parents, was the Stalin farm. But here in the United States, he always used Kittleson. He used his patronymic his entire life. Every census, his confirmation, his marriage record, his headstone, everything had Kittleson on it. And the same was true of his sisters. They used that masculine form of their patronymic, Kittleson, until they were married. Now, Thor's children, that was a different story. All of his children were born in Wisconsin. While they were living with their father, they used the last name Kittleson, just like he did. But at some point in time, three of his sons decided to use the last name Stolen, while the rest of the children continued to use Kittleson. Now, nobody really knows why they decided to use that farm name rather than the patronymic name. These Kids had never been to Norway. They never lived on that Stalin farm in Norway. We have no idea why they made that decision. They may have looked, sat back and said, you know, this whole patronymic thing, we are not Kittle's sons. So it doesn't make sense for us to use that last name. We're actually Thor's sons. If we're gonna use a patronymic, maybe we should use Thorson. Maybe they were looking at it and thinking, you know, there's a lot of people in this neighborhood with the last name Kittleson and we want to distinguish ourselves from some other people who have the same last name. I really have no idea why they made that decision, but that is what they did. So they half of the family used one last name and the other half used the other. If you're interested in some insight as to how various immigrants chose which last name they chose. In 1941, Marjorie Kimmerly, as part of her graduate thesis, did a survey of um, some Norwegian immigrants in the Kashkanang and Springdale congregations in Wisconsin. And the link to the full uh, text of her thesis is here. It's part of the Norwegian American Historical Association archive. And she goes into a lot of analysis of how they made dis the decisions they did and which types of um, external influences may have affected what decisions the immigrants made. But one um, fairly common theme that was fairly predominant when people were making the decision to go with patronymic versus farm name was definitely related to the community that they were settling in here in the United States. If it was made up of a lot of other Norwegians from the community that they left in Norway, they were a lot more likely to choose that farm name because they were settling among people who knew them when they were in Norway on that farm. So if someone's name was Lars Nelson Baki in Norway and people remembered him from the Baki farm in Norway when he came to this country that meant something to his neighbors. Oh yes, that was Lars from the Baki farm. We remember him and he, they were a lot more likely to choose that farm name if they were living among other Norwegians from that community. So it was if it was a fairly homogenous community, they were more likely to make that choice. Now, certainly there were exceptions to that, but that was a trend that she did notice when she was looking at names in 1941.
But what about the maiden name? That was a concept that did not exist in Norway. There wasn't this idea that once you marry, you assume the last name of your husband. But that was definitely something that the people here in the United States fully expected Norwegian immigrants to have. Uh, think of how many times when you're filling out paperwork, they ask for your mother's maiden name. It was the same case a hundred years ago. People were expected to know their mother's maiden name, even though in Norway that concept simply didn't exist. So sometimes that creates confusion for people who are researching their roots because they will see that the mother was a maiden name was written down for their female ancestor, even though she didn't necessarily have one. So what did that really mean to the children of Norwegian immigrants? Well, just as an example, I'm grabbing one of my ancestors here, my great, great, great grandmother. Sometimes when people were writing down her maiden name, they would use her farm name, either Kvam, the actual Norwegian name, or an Americanized version of it. A lot of people who came from that Kvam farm changed their name to Kwam in this country. So it could be either one of those when their children and grandchildren were filling out paperwork. Maybe they would just write down her patronymic, Jens daughter, or sometimes they even would masculinize it and make it Jens son, because in this country we typically don't see people using that female version of the patronymic. They may have even gone so far as to use her father's patronymic name. If we think of maiden name as meaning father's last name, you can see where they would make that leap, where they would look at it and say, oh, well, they, they mean her father's last name. So in this case, Suniva's father's patronymic was Johannesson. They might write down Johannesson or they may Americanize it and write down Johnson. So there's a lot of different ways that that name could be recorded. And sometimes that causes people to think, oh my gosh, maybe she was married more than once because, you know, I've never seen her with the name Johnson. Well, no, that was really just her father's patronymic. Doesn't necessarily mean that she had a husband prior to the marriage that you were aware of. One thing to keep in mind, spelling was very, very inconsistent. It just, it wasn't a cultural norm. It wasn't expected. So if you see the farm name spelled multiple ways, that's just how it was. They weren't particular about things being spelled consistently because they didn't need to be particular. So we just have to get over it. We just have to accept that there's gonna be a lot of variations in the way first names, patronymic names, and farm names are being spelled. It doesn't mean it's a different person, doesn't mean it's a different place. It just means that it was written down differently this time. And we just have to accept that and understand that. I wanted to do a quick example of a family and their inconsistent spelling and some choices that were made by them. This family came from Telemark to Wisconsin in the 1840s and their farm name was Bjorn. The next 50 years that they lived in this country their last name was spelled no fewer than 34 different ways. So I just wanted to drive home the point that spelling can be wildly inconsistent and we can't get too hung up on exact spelling. They did settle on a, an Americanized version that did become consistent for the family. They still pronounced it Bjorn, but they used completely English letters when spelling their name. In 1923, it became mandatory for Norwegians in Norway to choose a permanent last name and stick with it. The tradition of having a permanent last name that's inherited from father to offspring was kind of becoming more popular in the years leading up to this. But in 1923, they did make it official that you must make a choice and you must stick with it. Some families chose that patronymic name and others chose a farm name. Just like in the United States, those decisions weren't necessarily consistent. So you may see brothers with different last names simply because they chose a different last name. So thank you so much for joining me today to hear a little bit more about the patronymic versus farm name choices. If you would ever like to reach out to NAGC, I've got our website and email and phone number here. If you need some help or have some other questions, we also have some other webinars on our website. 
that are free of charge and you're welcome to check those out at any time. Thank you very much.